Welcome to the Random City Podcast. Chester Copperpot, he was a pro. He never made it this far. A competitor. He was very, very good. They do have a very particular set of skills. Nunchuck skills, bow hunting skills, computer hacking skills. The person is smart. People are dumb, panicky, dangerous animals, and you know it. I'm rude. You will be. Are you telling me you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? Back off, man. I'm a scientist. You are my brother, Anakin! He's gonna be the third scariest thing on that train. These guys come from legend. They're basically gods. There's only one god, man. And I'm pretty sure he doesn't dress like that. Hello, and welcome back to the Random City Podcast. This is Jimmy in Georgia. I'm your host once again here to talk to you about random things. And this week's episode may be a little more random than usual. The past, what, six weeks or so, we've been discussing the current blockbuster films out in theaters by focusing on the previous films and those franchises. Well, this week, there's not a blockbuster, (laughs) apart from the ones that have already been out, we've already at least somewhat discussed. And so, we're going to take a little different turn in our main discussion for the week. But we'll get to that in a few minutes. One thing I do want to start off the show with, over the weekend, uh, a legendary figure in fandom and geekdom in Hollywood passed away this weekend. Uh, Adam West, I'm sure you've heard. He was Batman to most of us. He was on Family Guy and other things in recent years. He even had a, a recent, at least one if not maybe two, cartoon adaptations of the old Batman 66 series. One for sure called The Return of the Cape Crusaders. And I feel like I'd heard something about a sequel. I don't know how, how that was gone or how that was working. I know typically with animation, they record those things years in advance in some cases. So that he still might have another project in the way. I'm not sure. But Adam West passed away. I believe it was Saturday it was announced. And Saturday afternoon, I fired up Netflix. And they had the Batman movie. That was kind of the summation, I guess, of that series. And watched through that. And one thing, just randomly throwing this out here, I was a fan of this show as a child. I watched it in reruns. I watched it on, it was our Fox affiliate. Used to show all these old shows from back in the 60s, and I liked them all. The Batman Show, The Monkees, I Dream of Genie, Bewitched, Gilligan's Island. Pretty much any of those type of shows, I've seen a bunch of them as a child, and I've always enjoyed them. I still do. Unlike some other shows that I enjoyed as a child from the 80s, I don't necessarily want to go back and rewatch those while, while I can go back and rewatch these. And that 66 Batman, probably two, three years ago, they were showing these on MeTV, and, and most of you are probably familiar, a, uh, a channel you receive most likely if you have a cable service at this point, and it plays nothing but those old shows, kind of like TV Land when it first got started. And I set it up to record every time Batman was on which I think was like twice a day or something. And I'm pretty sure I probably saw most of the 120 episodes of the old Batman series. And this was prior to the Blu-ray release, which I guess was maybe a year and a half, two years ago now. And it was really fun, actually, to go back and see those old shows. And there, to me, to realize how many I didn't see as a kid. I feel like maybe almost a quarter to a third, maybe even more, I don't ever remember seeing as a child. There were definitely villains and guest stars. I don't remember having been a part of that show. For example, Vincent Price was Egghead. I never remember that one as a child. There were some episodes, I honestly don't remember the the villain, but it was something kind of like Robin Hood, Archer type. Usually, I really liked the ones whenever Batgirl was on there. That was some of the later ones, and so those were fun. So maybe that's what the ones they focused on more back in my childhood when they were doing those episodes. But yeah, Adam West was my first Batman. Uh, And around that same time, I would see some of the more reruns of the Super Friends, in some cases, maybe new episodes of the Super Friends, I guess. But I always associated Adam West with Batman more so than those cartoons, you know, whether it be from Scooby Doo and and Batman and Robin or whatever it was. Definitely up until at least 1989 when the Batman movie came out with Michael Keaton from Tim Burton, Adam West was. Probably most people's idea of Batman, kind of like Linda Carter, is still most people's idea of Wonder Woman. And Christopher Reeves, probably for at least older people, is the idea for Superman. And then even older people might be George Reeves. Who knows? 
But yeah, Adam West was a hero. I mean, definitely to me as a child. So rest in peace, Batman. Bruce Wayne. Adam West. One thing I do want to t- kind of mention here in this opening section, there's a couple movies that have fairly large milestones here the last few days. A few days ago now, E.T. celebrated its 35th anniversary a couple days back. Predator has been out for 30 years, so 82 and 87. And I'm sure there's some other movies. So a lot, a lot of movies that have been out for a long time at this point that are, to me, a classic. E.T. I heard Techno Retro Dance talk about E.T. on their show that came out Monday on the 12th. And so they have a huge section dedicated to E.T. If you like the 70s and 80s and geek stuff, Star Wars, go check them out. They're fun. Definitely check out Techno Retro Dance. They're on Twitter. They're on iTunes. I'm sure they're probably in Google Play and all the others as well. Shaz and Jedi Schwa. And they're over there on Techno Retro Dance. But anyway, yeah. E.T. I remember seeing this movie as a four-year-old. And some of you may not remember when you were four. I remember lots of stuff from when I was four. I loved E.T. Reese Pieces. I mean, that movie made me want those. I have a picture somewhere. I don't know where. I haven't seen it in a long time. When I was in kindergarten, which would have been that fall, so that by that time I was five, I have a photo of me in a blue E.T. shirt with a giant, like, iron-on looking, like, printed image of E.T. there on the front. And... I had several, several E.T. things. I had one that had a draw, drawstring where it was E.T., 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 Zumba. <laughs> I had a little, like a little stuffed animal with like a fake pleather outer covering. I had one, I think, that walked. Lots of E.T. stuff. Then at least from, at least in my perspective at that, that time. E.T., again, is one of those Steven Spielberg movies. And to me, a lot of my childhood revolves around Steven Spielberg. And I'll go into this, I guess, here. Why not? It's some random topics and random thoughts. I've thought about this recently. As a child, let's pull the curtain back with Jimmy. I never knew my dad. Well, I say that. When I was four or five years old, I had some interactions with my dad up until then. And I never saw him after that. So, I mean, realistically, I never really knew my dad. And he was never really around. He was around here and there. I remember going on some trips with him. I remember a couple presents he'd given me. I've seen pictures, you know, at a birthday party or something. But I never really knew my dad. We lived out in a rural area when I was a child, when I was up to like 12, on a farm. We didn't run the farm, we didn't own the farm, but we lived on a farm. And so there wasn't really typically kids around to play with. There were some neighbors here and there that had some younger kids around my age here and there, but not consistently. And so for me, after school, when I get to third grade, I come home from school, get off the bus, there's nobody home, and so my you know, quote unquote babysitter is either like the Atari, <laughs> the afternoon cartoons, or you know, Gilligan's Island or something like that. And then you know, a few years later down the road we would have VCRs and I could watch whatever movie I wanted or whatever. But I mean I, I yeah, I played with my toys, I watched TV and, and watched movies and stuff. And so that was kind of my childhood. I didn't have a lot of stuff outside of school to do. I just did it. And so a large part of my childhood, as I look back, is just watching television, which is kind of sad. It's kind of the um, Scrooged thing with Bill Murray, where Frank Cross is watching the TV as a child. And that's pretty much all he does. (laughs) Even later on in the movie, he's remembering things like, I was running down the hill. There were flowers. This girl, but she was beautiful. That was the little house on the prairie, Frankie. Was it the homecoming episode? Yes, it was the homecoming episode, Frankie. So I'm not quite to that point of my remember the TV shows as my as my own memories. But yeah, I really do look back on these things. And this was a huge part of my childhood. Just It just was. And so E.T. was a huge part of my, my early life that I can remember. It is. Um, as far as I remember... We just saw the E.T. the one time, and I have some of the toys, and I would say the words and stuff and like that. And I remember years later, at this point, uh, I was in sixth grade, so whenever that was, 1988 maybe, E.T. came out on VHS for the very first time. And we had a, a classroom, and it was Miss Hudson. I don't know why, and I, maybe it was near the end of the school year or something. I don't remember. But we watched E.T. over the course of a couple days in her classroom. And... 
at that point, you know, several years later, I thought a lot of E.T. was kind of boring. I have not watched E.T. again since I was in sixth grade. And I knew at one point it was on Netflix. So Monday, after hearing Techno Retro Dads talk about E.T., I was like, oh, cool, I'll watch E.T. again. It's been forever. It's been almost 30 years since I've seen E.T. And so I'm like, cool, let's go to Netflix and try to watch it. And of course, since there's an anniversary or something, it's not on Netflix anymore. And so I guess I'd have to buy it. But that's how Netflix always works. That's how Amazon works. That's how Hulu works. When something is appropriate to watch, it's never on there. But I would like to see E.T. again. I hope to see it in the near future. And maybe I'll make that happen. But yeah, just in general, Steven Spielberg movies, as, as a very young child... I was watching these things, and in some cases, I probably shouldn't have been, and I've, I've shared that on the on the podcast before. But in our, I guess in our main focus here for the show today, I want to talk about my mom, which I may sound random, but that's what I'm going to talk about. And so, I'm going to throw in an old ad for, for some something E.T. related, and I'll be right back, and we're going to talk some more about geeky stuff from my childhood. Atari. Made especially for systems from Atari. The video game that lets you help E.T. get home. Just in time for Christmas. Happy Holidays. One thing I was thinking about on Monday, as I was listening to um, Shaz and Jedi Schwa talk about E.T. on their podcast, my mom was like an OG fangirl. Like, like, seriously, like, back in the 60s, she loved the old Star Trek show, and it was new, and it was on TV. And so, even before I was born, you know, there was the cartoon series in the, in the 70s, and I'm sure she was watching that with my brother. And I remember her buying my brother like Star Trek comic books. And he, she bought him Star Wars comic books. And so I've got a lot of those now, the ones that survived over the years. She took him to see Star Wars movies. She took us to see Star Trek movies. You know, she took us to see E.T. We watched Close Encounters, all these different things. But the point of all that is we watched those because she liked them. Yeah, we liked them too, especially as kids. But we watched them because she wanted to see them. I really don't think she would have taken us to these movies had did she, if she didn't want to see them, personally. I, I, maybe some parents do that, I guess, for their kids. But my mom, she liked this stuff. And even now, she still does. She's in her 70s. And she still loves, like, the Marvel movies. The, I don't know, she liked the Hunger Games. She, you know, all that kind of stuff. Anything kind of geeky, she still likes it. I'm going to throw in a clip here in a few minutes of, of an old podcast. I've been doing podcasts on and off for, like, eight years. I started back in March of 2009. And I'm kind of inconsistent, and, I, and I'm trying to be better about that right now. But there's, there was one show I did. I did two and a half seasons of this show called Falling Skies. I was the first podcast dedicated to Falling Skies on TNT. But <laughs> I liked Falling Skies. I, I was, again, I was excited about Falling Skies because of Steven Spielberg. My mom heard about Falling Skies. She was excited about Falling Skies. And so that was one of the few times in my podcasting history probably 2011, so six years ago, that I actually got something for being a podcaster. I got a screener of the first few episodes, I think it was the first four episodes of Falling Skies. And so I actually took it over to my mom's house. We watched it together before it even hit TV, because we used to do that a lot, actually. Like <laughs> I remember one weekend I was home for like a break, like Thanksgiving or something, and we watched like an entire season of Loss over a weekend on DVD. So my mom likes all this stuff that I like, and so... Anyway, so we're going back to Falling Skies. So in second season of Falling Skies, I decided to add a segment to the show where I would just kind of call my mom and just talk to her about what she thought about the episode. And sometimes she gave some insight, sometimes, you know, whatever. But it was fun. It wouldn't, So I'm going to throw in a little clip of that. And I love the theme song I use for this, by the way. 
It's from a WWE wrestler who no longer wrestles with the company. His name was Brodus Clay when he was wrestling with WWE. And his theme song said, Somebody Call My Mama. How's everything going? Oh, pretty good. You got a little reunion? Yeah, we went to the reunion. We went to the fish fry. That's good. That was pretty nice. And When did you head over there? Went over Saturday morning. Well, how was y'all's weekend? Pretty good. This makes it into a whole lot. Yeah, it's just so hot. Yeah. Oh, I got a surprise for you. Oh, yeah? I, I, don't, I wish to... Well, I got them over there. I'd have to get them because I can't remember which name of them. I saw some comic books in uh, the Brother Charlie. Oh, yeah? And I don't, they're probably not worth anything, but you know, you never know. Right. And I picked up about, what, maybe five or six. No, oh, that's good. All right, they saw this one, the X-Men. Okay. And an X-Factor, I've never heard of X-Factor. Okay. And an X-Caliber. Okay. Then I got Thunderbolts, you ever heard of them? No, not really. Oh, it's five. Okay. Oh, and I got the Fantastic Four. Okay. And I got another X Men that's 28. Hmm. I was just so tickled to see the comic books. That's cool. I'll take them. I've got a little collection I mean, of them. I'll just put them in here and, you know, when you come or something. And, well, I was just so surprised to see any comic books in there because yeah. that's something you don't hardly ever see in there. And I thought, well. That's cool. Well, if you keep them 30 years, they might be worth something. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. So, so did you watch the uh, Fallen Skies last night? Yeah, I you, sure what'd did. What did you think about this, this last Oh, uh, I. To me, it's getting better and better. Yeah. I think next the next one's going to be better than last night. Yeah, it's interesting to see what's going to happen. They are taking that week off um, next Sunday, I guess, for the Olympics, yeah. and they'll be back the first week of August. But, um, yeah, it'll be good. I, I, I guess the main thing is what's going to happen to Ben since he decided to run off by himself. Yeah, he went. his daddy was hugging him, and he went his way down the road. Yeah. And I guess the kind of question there is, are they going to show what he does? Or are they not going to show what he does? Because typically when people have run off, like Pope ran off this season, last season, they didn't show what he did. I'm kind of assuming he'll just show back up in a couple of weeks, and we won't actually see what he does. We'll just hear about what he did. I, I don't know that for sure. Right. But that seems to be what they've done before. The only time we've really seen what somebody did by themselves was the flashback that Tom had when he was trying to get back to, to Massachusetts. Right. So what did you think about those little spider things that were on there last night? That was different. I mean, it is, I mean, they was caught. They made me think of another movie I seen like that, but I couldn't think of what it was. Yeah, there's been stuff like that and other stuff. I mean, but it was different though. I like that. I mean, they had those little things, kind of like that in Alien. It wasn't like that. It wasn't like um, Starship Troopers, but it was like something. I, I just don't. Right. I can't place it either. It's similar to some other little creature. Right, but I liked it. It was different. The little things were in pitch black, maybe. Yeah. But they were small, like they were just miniaturized or something. Something like that, maybe. Yeah. I guess I'll talk to you later on. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Well, that was a clip of me and my mom really briefly talking about Falling Skies. And as far as my podcast there goes, I made it through halfway of season three. And honestly, I got a little bored. I really did. And so I never finished season three. I never, I never even watched any more episodes. I, I got through the season three, episode five. I didn't get the last five or six episodes of three or and I never watched any of season four or five. So I basically made it halfway through that show before pulling the plug on the podcast. And, and I've often thought about, Hey, I should go back and finish it. I mean, the Facebook page for that thing keeps getting more and more and more and more likes. I think it had a couple hundred likes when I stopped podcasting. It has almost a thousand likes now. And so I'm like, maybe I should go do that again. And maybe I will. I don't know, but it was just fun to throw my mom on there occasionally. <laughs> You know, these days it's cool to be the fangirl. There's fangirls going rogue, fangirl blog, all these different things you hear about. And, you know, actually Eckstein, her universe. You hear about Trisha Barr. All, the, all these different famous, at this point, either one way or the other, fangirls. Vanessa Marshall's a good example of that. I and mean, there's lots of people. And so one of the things I've found recently, again, another podcast I've been listening to in the last few weeks or so, is by a couple fangirls. There's a podcast called Sky Talkers, This Galactic Life, and it's hosted by Caitlin and Charlotte, and they have some cool stuff to say about Star Wars. In the most recent episode I was listening to, they were interviewing a lady who was making a documentary about Princess Leia and about how 
women have responded to her, and, and girls too, I guess, but I just think it's interesting. But yeah, my mom was a fan girl in the 60s, so, which it goes back to my whole point of she's an OG fan girl, and without her, I don't think I would be as interested in these things that I like, that so many of us bond over, you know, whether it be in the Geek Out Loud type community, or through and just with the friends. I mean, there's so many people you meet. I've become associated with a lawyer in the not too recent past. And you go walk into his office, and he's got Star Wars toys in there, which I'm like, that's cool. And the front of his desk, he has this little shelf. I'm like, I would definitely put some Star Wars figures down here. He's like, yep. <laughs> and so I just think that's funny. And I don't know, I wouldn't necessarily expect lawyers to be into Star Wars, but hey, everybody likes Star Wars just about these days. Just want to say... Thanks, Mom, for being awesome and into cool stuff that I like to this day. And so, yeah. All right. As we're about to wrap up the show, don't forget, if you go over to audible.randomcitypodcast.com, you can get two free audiobooks if you sign up for that free trial. Those books are yours to keep even if you cancel your membership. And you can check out two free books. I hear, I haven't read any of them, I hear there's some awesome Star Trek novelizations that are continuing the story of Picard and crew. So maybe that would be something you might be interested in since I've been talking about how much my mom loves Star Trek. So, check that out over on Audible. Get two free audiobooks. Go to audible.randomcitypodcast.com. Another thing I want to mention before we get too far gone here, the Random City Podcast and Jimmy and Georgia Radio are both now available, featured, whatever you want to call it, in the Satchel Player. It's a podcast app built to support podcasts. You can find local podcasts. You can find all sorts of stuff in there. I've heard about this podcast app Podcatcher, as some people call them, really from Derek and Steve from the the Golaverse, whether it be Round 3, Starkville Lab, Starkville's House of L, Geek Out Loud, whatever. I, I hear these guys mention it, and that's really how I found out about it. You can check it out on the App Store and Android or iOS. You can check it out on Twitter, Instagram, and I think the website's satchelplayer.com. So if you do have that app, you can search for Jimmy and Georgia or search for Random City Podcast or Jimmy and Georgia Radio. And speaking of ways you can listen, we are available in iTunes, Google Play, and there's also an RSS feed on the website if you just want the RSS feed. In any of those places that you do listen or may listen, if you can, please leave a rating and review. That would be great. That would help out the show. And if you want to get in contact with us, you can use our social media, at Random City on Twitter, at Random City Podcast on Instagram, email us at randomcitypodcast at gmail.com. You can call into the show at 773-71-RANDOM. You can also text message there. You can leave a voicemail, whatever. You can also email us a voicemail if you'd like. And then also, don't forget, you can go over to randomcitypodcast.com. And so, until next Thursday morning, I am Jimmy and Georgia. Peace. <laughs>